This playthrough is rated M for Mature. You know, I always wanted to be uh, chased at by screaming fans, but this is ridiculous. Greetings and salutations, viewers, while we're back here with the finale of Parasite Eve. In the last episode, we beat the ultimate being, but it just won't stay dead. Now it's chasing after us, and uh, it wants our precious, precious body, soul, and it, I think it had a couple of tentacles, so something else might happen if we let it catch us. We probably shouldn't let that happen, but um, anyway, we're at the thing here, so we gotta get to the engine room. The engine room. Uh-oh, here it comes. We better run. You know, it goes very, very slowly. Let's watch what happens if I get killed by it. Yeah, it just jumps on you and kills you. So, yeah. Uh, if you let it ki kill you, it's an instant game over. So, so you have to go all the way back to before the ultimate being where you were with Wayne and before you engraved your weapons because that's the save point. So you have to do that all over again. But, uh, so I'll see. I just wanted to show that off. So I'll, I do actually have to do that all over again, but it's not that big a deal. It didn't take me that long to do it in the first place. So I just want to show what happens if you get killed by it. So I'll be right back as soon as we get back to this point again. So see you all in a second. All right, we're back here again. So yeah, nothing too difficult. So anyway, oh, it's chasing us. We got to run. Run. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Like I said, it insta kills you and it's just going to keep chasing you. So just, just run like the Dickens. So... Yeah, it's kind of a dick move that they would do that to you at the very end of the game after doing all, depending on how easy or, or difficult it, the, the final boss was. But yeah, he's always going to be on your butt, so we need to get to the engine room, and uh, we're going to do it in typical Resident Evil style. We're going to blow the boat up. Do all those things chasing after us. I like the, the tempo getting more as if it's supposed to be scary. You know, I think that, don't they classify this game as survival horror? I don't know, this game... <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever call this game scary. I guess the concept of it is maybe some of the, the themes they talk about it are kind of creepy. But I don't know if I'd ever call it a survival horror game. I'd call it a, you know, horror, maybe a horror RPG, I guess. That's more Shadow Hearts and Kudelka's, you know, kind of mentality about it. But anyway, yeah, we got to get to here and uh, set off the bomb. Set us up the bomb. If the boiler pressure shoots up, I can blow this ship to bits. All right. Just... Take your time, eh? You know, just waiting on the thing. Uh-oh. Here it comes. Ugh. Look at all that goo at least mind. Do you know where we are? We're in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> uh, Hell's Kitchen is a place in um, uh, New York, uh, which is considered a bad part, even though there's a lot of bad parts in, in uh, New York. But Hell's Kitchen, uh, those who watch Daredevil know what, what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> did that thing just open the door? I don't know, just something funny about about it opening the, the door to chase after you. I didn't even think it had thumbs. But what do I know, right? Yeah, it's really not that hard to run away from this guy. Not really. Unless you're purposely not running or something like that. <laughs> Did she just, like, supercharge fast to get past that point? I guess she just is like... Oh, it's coming after us very, very slowly. It's never going to catch us up these stairs. What the... Ah, oh, no, it's flying. They fly now. I'm never going to get away from that, am I? But yeah, it, it evolved to start flying so it could actually chase after us. Because it wants a, deli a, bi a bit of that delicious Aya booty. Or Aya booty. Huh, so that's what it took to defeat the ultimate being, just blowing up the boat. Wish we could have done that earlier. Yeah, basically a Resident Evil, except the only thing missing from that was like a countdown timer. But, uh, yeah, blowing up the boat defeat it. It's finally over. Dot, dot, dot. I don't understand. Why do I have this power? I don't know, dude. Don't get existential on us now. It's because Maya's inside of you, eh? Yeah? Not literally. What? Are you talking about literally? When your mother and your sister die, they transplant a part of your sister into you. Into me? Yeah. When you were seven, you probably don't remember any of it, but you were born with a defect in your right eye, and so my Maya's cornea was it transplanted into your right eye. Huh. I didn't know you could do that. Actually, no, I've heard about that before, uh, the cornea, but uh, it's one of those things you kind of forget about. So, 
because okay so maya got the liver that got e had even side and then i got before maya died i got her cornea so that's so like by process of like transplants i got some of the power because of maya who had even side of her at the time if i'm getting this right all right i what are you spike from cowboy bebop oh no he had a fake eye never mind then what i saw when i touched eve was it it said that when you have an extreme experience what you see then is Brandon into the cornea, but this hasn't been scientifically proven. I don't think it's still been scientifically proven, at least at the point of this t time it's sci science fiction hogwash. That that was Maya's last memory? That was the last thing she ever saw? As for the mitochondria that was in Aya's body, I think it's underwent a different evolutionary change than Eve. By living symbi symbi biotically with Aya's mitochondria. Well, it took me a hot minute to read that. It still possessed his Eve power, but from there, evolved to the point where it could live symbiotically with the human nucleus. I see, I see. Science fiction. I see, I see. <laughs> Me and Maya are mitochondrial power? What, wonderful twin powers activate? Almost. Starting with the incident in Japan, now with this. I wonder if this is a message to all mankind. Message? What kind of message? How can I explain? If the Earth is a single human being... We humans that invade the Earth become like viruses out of control. Well, that's not the first time I've heard of human beings being a virus, Mr. Smith. Um, we, in, we, in essence, are upsetting the natural balance of the body. This is definitely utter destruction. No, uh, we're not that weak. Eh, humans can't be resilient, but, we can, but if we get stabbed, do we not bleed? You see, humans are, in essence, parasites. You can say that we are parasites and the world is our host. Well, there's some parasites that do benefit the world, but we do do a lot of damage to the world, I'll admit. Dot, dot, dot. Look, the sun's coming up. Let's watch the sunrise. After this this hectic six days of our lives. Actually, I think that's the name of a soap opera. No, that's days of our lives. Never mind. Ah, now everything's back to normal. Wait, didn't we ever see this beginning? Oh, hey, it's Ben. All right. Oh, we got a police escort for this place. Are we back at Carnegie Hall again? Come on, Ike, let's go. Thank you, Ben. Oh, sorry, that went automatically. Oh, she's even in her black one piece. Nice. What, is Ben taking an eye out to, to the show? Oh, Daniel's here too. Oh, they're going out as a group. Nice. I'm not too good with these social events. Nah, not me. I love these things. You love an opera? What kind of kid are you? We have to make up for Christmas Eve. Well, yeah, all that crap did happen on Christmas Eve, didn't it? Oh, well. Oh, what? Made us here, too? The nerd? Huh. I thought you had to go back to Japan or something like that. This is my first time, so um, I'm nervous. That could be said about a lot of things. That's because y'all <laughs> dressed up like pre and is pretty. What? No, no, no. That's not why. I'm oh, sorry. It's starting, shall we? Yeah, it's kind of going automatically, so I couldn't do it. It's basically Ben's making fun of because I is dressed all hot and made us getting a little flustered because of that. So, that's nice to have them all sit together. Oh. Huh. Yeah, he's awkward, that's for sure. He's. Mm, yes, Daniel and Ben are late, aren't they? Well, sometimes it goes automatically, but. Uh... They better hurry. It's going to start any time now. Yeah, that was automatic. It's. Anyway. <laughs> Made it say something, otherwise you gotta think you're a creep. Uh, the restroom must be pretty crowded. Yeah, that's probably it. Smooth. What's wrong? You seem tense. You just spent like, I don't know how many days you spent with Aya, like saving the world. I think you can. Uh, er, yes, of course. What? Um, uh, well, since I'm going back to Japan tomorrow, I might as well. Nope. <laughs> ben just cock blocked him. <laughs> Move, Maida. Yeah, all right. Maida, time. I'm sitting next to Aya. Well, you had your chance, Maida. Sorry. Sorry, we're late. Well, time to go back to Japan. Or at least it got close to a really hot, hot American blue haired, blonde haired, uh, blue eyed, blonde haired lady. But uh, at least you were close. Uh, 
I wonder what show they're going to see this time. Wait, this looks familiar. Um, I mean, other than the actress there. Father, please give me permission to marry Eva. It's like like we're playing. It's like we're playing the beginning of the game again. This is weird. Why would they play the same show? You think there'd be some like, I forbid it. I think there'd be some stigma attached to it. You know well what'll happen if you do. Those who will succumb to your booty, booty, beauty, all die in horrible ways. <laughs> you can say that about booty too. You don't understand. She is the one that has suffered after the deaths. She is evil. God, grab her. I don't even know if I'm doing the same voice of her before. And burn her at the stake. <laughs> as soon as we see the fire, everyone just jumps. They're like, holy crap. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> Forgot about that. Because they're like, oh, God, spontaneous combustion. Oh, no, it's just a prop. Okay. Wait, wasn't when the girls, uh, uh, Melissa sang? Father, when she sang, everyone combusted. It was after that. Okay. And since it's to death, all I ask you is take my life along with hers. Sorry. Edward. I almost feel like this is supposed to be a reference to Final Fantasy VI or something with the name Edward, but uh, Edward's such a general term, or general name, so. I'm in the, I'm in the back. Would you sit down? Sorry. <laughs> Get with it, guys. You're too too cool for school, Ben. But that sounds just like Eve. Or they didn't want to get another voice actress to sing a different set of lines. So. Well, it's nice to hear it without people catching on flame. So that actually doesn't sound too bad when you think about it. Actually, it kind of reminds me of the Final Fantasy VI uh, um, opera scene. Probably one of my favorite scenes in gaming in general, actually. Just, I don't know, just something, I think it was a first for me, seeing something like that in an RPG. It just surprised me. And it, I wouldn't say influenced me, but it, it just surprised me to know that they could throw stuff like that in games. You know, just all of a sudden, let's go to opera, you know. So that's why it's a horror game. It's got the ambiguous ending there where, you know, I think they, I, I, well, obviously it's kind of different because there is a sequel to this game, but I'm trying to remember what the, I heard some people explain or try to explain why, why the game ends like that. Uh, Tetsuya Murr, where, oh yeah, that does make sense. They worked on the character design because I kind of reminds me of some other characters. Um, I think the, the idea, there's a couple of theories behind that is that one, it's Eve, Eve's mitochondria has affected all these people, so she's not quite gone, that she's still in people's bodies, and that, you know, who knows what she's doing. Or this is Aya's mitochondria affecting everyone around her because it evolved differently. But um, it, I forgot what the actual explanation is. It's, it's supposed to be left obviously ambiguous, like, you know, is Eve truly gone, or is the mitochondria still fighting back or is it evolving or is it I is doing stuff like that because you see her stand up and then everyone's you know got the the, the eyes is uh, on it so but uh, but yeah overall uh, that's it for Parasite Eve uh, the credits are rolling and uh, what a game it's a it's a different type of RPG but I like it because it was different you know an action RPG something with guns instead of fantasy which you know, I kind of wish there were more RPGs that took place in different settings that weren't fancy. Although fancy is still my favorite, I just like the idea of RPGs being in like different settings, like modern day, or science fiction, or something like that. So that was a nice change of pace. The story is a bit weird and different too. The whole 
Um, the idea that this is based off a, no a Japanese novel about the same... I don't know if it's the same name or no, something like that. But in this game, they make it a sequel to that story um, about having an influence from that story and the whole mitochondria and it just being um, cells in your body that one of them evolved to a point where it became, got a personality and tried to change the world in its own image or whatever. And it was a nice change of pace, just, you know, and they made they gave a reason why we were fighting all these creatures is that Eve had, you know, evolved them or changed them through their cells. And, you know, the game, I think, was just long enough. It didn't overstay its welcome. And not too difficult, too. I mean, yeah, the first time I played the game, I didn't really figure out the, the modding system super well. Maybe I, I did, but I never utilized as well as I could have. Um, but nowadays, obviously, I know better. Um... But yeah, I like the story. I like the character of uh, all the side characters. I like them. They're just defined enough and make enough of an impact to be interesting. Like Daniel, you know, just wanted to be a good father and then ends up being a great partner to Aya to save, to protect and save her because he can't do much. But the time he did, I like that he got that one moment to shine to give her the bullets because throughout most of the game, he had to be shoved to the side because obviously I was the only one that could fight Eve and her minions because of the spontaneous combustion, so they give a reason why the side characters can't do much personally to help her, but they can help her on the side, like getting the information and stuff like that. And uh, made uh, the lovable Japanese nerd trying to give us useless items in our inventory every time. Um, I think the reason for that is so, like, when we get the final gun in the game, there's there's always an open spot open for that. That was I think that was the point of the item um, in the first place. The general concept of it. Um, oh yeah, the music in the game was really good too. I think Ted, uh, Ted Shimura, I think Yoko Shimomura did the music. I, obviously, the credits have already passed, but I think she did work on the music on this too. And uh, uh, there might have been some other folks as well that did it, but uh, uh, she's known to do really good soundtracks for most of her games. Um, so that's why the music was was good. You know, had a lot of good like you know haunting melodies and. Uh, actually, most of the music in this game was more haunting when you think about it, just because of the themes behind it. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. And the game mechanics, though, not too difficult, were simple enough to, you know, get used to, figure out, and and if you knew what you were doing, you could almost just basically just pretty much just beat the game pretty easily after a certain point. Like, yeah, I technically quote-unquote died a couple times during that fight when my auto life kicked in, but I mean, if I didn't have that, I would be healing normally, or I would have had a lot of you know, uh, medicine threes or fours ready to go just in case she smacked me and did all that damage. And of course, if I didn't know what I was doing, I probably would have put a lot more points into defense, so I wouldn't even have taken that damage in the first place. So it just all adds up. The only reason I put it all into attack is because I knew at some point I was going to get the auto heal and stuff like that, so I was gonna, I was prepared for that. But obviously, if you're a first-time player, you probably coordinate both one or the other. Uh, I'm trying to think what else to say about this game. I think I had a lot of Despite it being a city, I thought it had just enough interesting locales to go to to make it not just a boring building every single time. Um, I guess really the only flub I'd have with this game is like, um, obviously I wish there was a bit more areas to explore. I know why it did, because it, it made it seem like it was very, if, if there, it was a major crisis, so you could just be going around everywhere, even though you could go back to old areas and grind for uh, bonus points and everything like that. But still, I kind of wish there was a few more areas you could explore to get something, uh, but yeah, you know, for being a, a short focus game, it, it's fine. It's one, it's more of a nitpick than anything. Um, and I do like the fact that Eve was always uh, a, a force in the game, like a fet, uh, trying to either run away with us or mess with us or trying to get us to help her or whatever. So she was, as a bad guy, she was always on the forefront of her mind. So it just, she isn't like RP, some RPGs where they get introduced and then disappear for like 75% of the game. You know, you always want to have your villains have somewhat of a presence, so we know that we need to have a focus of we gotta take this person out because they've done some bad things. In this game, Eve, Eve like killing Lorraine. Oh, yep, Yoko Shimomura. I thought I thought she did the music. I didn't know if there was any other people who helped with it. Um, that was Yoko Shimomura, probably probably one of my top ten favorite video game artists, next to like um, Nobu Matsu. Uh, God, there's quite a few. I'm just trying to look at uh, like the guy who does the tales of series uh he does most of the music i think he also did like dark souls and stuff like that too one day i'll have to talk about my top i can't like uh, like uh, catching me on the spot i i forgot the names of the top two people but nobu metsu and yoko Shimura are definitely up there on my uh, top 10 video game uh, mu uh 
uh, composers and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think what else to really say. Uh, it is kind of weird how some characters, though, in the game kind of uh, disappear from the plot all of a sudden. Like uh, Baker being the chief. You'd think he would be in a few more scenes even after what happened with Shiva. But I guess the idea is either... They never said he died, so I assume he just... He got so wounded that he needed to be in the hospital or, or taken out of the city to be treated. But yeah, he just kind of disappears. Same with Ben. Ben just disappears from the plot after after the, the police headquarters gets uh, attacked by Eve. Um, same with the other side character. So I, I kind of wish they didn't give enough name characters and just focus it on like... I mean, obviously the main side characters were Daniel and, uh, and Maida. But yeah, it was just kind of weird how some of them just disappeared from the plot. I think I remember hearing something about how the game was a little rushed, so it kind of makes sense that, and the fact that this is this game, whole game is basically taking a lot of, some of the ideas from Final Fantasy VII, uh, like killed concepts, and uh, I think I remember someone saying that it was taken from the the D or the original N64 version of Final Fantasy VII before it came what it is, and apparently that the, the concept of that game was about a detective and everything like that. That's why Eve kind of reminds me of Sephiroth and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, overall, I, uh, I, I like this game a bit, not my top favorite RPG of all times, but it's definitely up there just because of how, well, not top, but it's definitely in a high tier because just, you know, how short and focused it is and what it did differently and the interesting systems and stuff like that. Um, a bit, they do do a bit differently in the sequel. I'll do that one of these days, but anyway, for beating the game, we get 3000 bonus points to spend and new game plus so in uh in the um so in the when you play new game plus you can spend these bonus points so it gives you a bit of a edge you do start at level one again unfortunately but you get that weapon and armor that you engraved and you get to put it over in the new game so normally at this point i would say that the game is done but the thing is the game is not quite done yet there actually is a super there's a, a bonus uh level that you can go to um called the Chrysler building at the end of the game and it's 77 floors of awesomeness yeah so I'm gonna have to figure out a way how to do that I might have to just I might have to just like either skip or speed through like a lot of the game like I might have to do like a well we'll see what happens but I might have to just fast forward through like a lot of the non-battles in it just because it's randomly generated so yay that's always fun um but I'm gonna do that so Next episode, whenever I get that all set up, I, I, I'm going to meet you at, uh, I think I'm going to do it at day five, because we still need some levels for the Chrysler Building, because it is, can get quite difficult. Uh, I'm also going to, I'm also going to redo uh, the final day again, or a bit before the final day, on day five, I'm going to go back to the no turning back point, and I'm going to go ahead and get the junk weapon. Um, it'll at least help um, with the beginning of playing the next, uh, the new game plus up till day five. And the junk weapon does a lot of ton, ton of damage as well. I'll probably do. I'll probably at the next episode. I'll probably show what different versions of the junk weapon you can get and like what the stats are for them, just to show it off. And that's just getting 300 junk. Which what I'll do is I'll just go back to day five, go back to the park, and steal junk from the crows over and over and over again until I get 300. Probably will take me quite a few hours, but I'll do it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you there. So, but. For those who don't want to watch the bonus content, and we can leave it here. So I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of Parasite Eve. Not the most efficient version of the way I played through, but I uh, uh, hope you played it nonetheless. And for those who never got to play it, maybe give you a chance to try it out. And this strategy will actually get you to beat the game for those who maybe never got to beat it in the first place. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next game.